So let's see what the next video on the list is. Stefan Milo Graham Hancock episode four Bimini Road. <sighs> Bimini Road again. Great. Really? Well, hello and welcome back to the next episode of Dunking. In this one, we're going to be doing Stefan Milo's response to Graham Hancock's Ancient Apocalypse, Episode 4. <sighs> yeah, the same episode as the last one. And um, just like Mini Minute Man, Stefan basically has this to say. This one, in all honesty, I don't have as much to say about. I'm not a geologist. I found it... There are two episodes I found the least convincing out of all of them. This is definitely one of them. So let's just jump right on into this. For those who haven't seen it, the Bimini Road is this stretch of really unique rock off the coast of the Bahamas. Uh, Hancock says it's a deliberate construction because of the, the layout of these blocks. They're in a very uniform shape. Um, geologists disagree and argue that it's natural beach rock right off the bat we get the same kind of thing that mini minute man said in the last video yeah it's just beach rock but something that mini minute man touched on that stefan didn't and i would have put this in the last video but i had to wait till i got this back from my brother who i'd loaned it to because i had to check some crap in there no it's not the mars mystery stefan um the Edgar Casey Foundation, for those of you who aren't aware of what it is, it's a the nonprofit organization set up by Edgar Casey. I think it was his kids or his grandkids, but their whole mission is to like treat these readings as like real and they have they, they they raise money, man. It's like super Scientology light is what it seemed like looking at their website in more recent days. But at the end of the day, what they're really about is like pushing the Edgar Casey predictions and readings up to like to, to verify them to prove them correct and so um, they've done these they, they've financed people they have there's a guy by the name of Mark Leonard who's um, talked about in this other book over here I'll uh, actually post the uh, anyway I'll just post a screenshot of the page there I posted a picture of the damn thing in my community tab if you don't believe I've got them um, but it's a uh, in message of the Sphinx it talks about how uh, Mark Leonard was actually like financed by the Edgar Casey Foundation to go to school and um, you can read more about that also in I believe it was an article I read from the Smithsonian that said the same thing and um, he's not um, a woo peddler by any stretch. He worked alongside Zahi Hawass and whatnot. As a matter of fact, he's one of the most respected Egyptologists in the world. But um, the Edgar Casey Foundation, w when they caught wind of him being like interested in Atlantis and shit in his early days before he had a degree, they were totally happy to finance and put him through. Edgar Casey's the one that predicted the whole Bimini thing, right? So that's why they keep going there. And that is when Graham Hancock says Atlantis this is the road to Atlantis. He doesn't say it's just another ancient thing. He, he calls this one Atlantis. And that to me is like a huge nod to the Edgar Casey Foundation. That's like, where's my tinfoil hat? No. I'm not saying that he gets money from the Edgar Casey Foundation to do research or that he ever has, but I'm saying that it's an awfully weird place to say this is Atlantis. And the only reason that I could see pegging this of all the other places that he goes as Atlantis as a huge nod to the Edgar Casey Foundation. And I can't find any list of who they give money to nowadays, but the fact that they gave money to Mark Leonard and we can verify that. To a guy like me who's extremely skeptical, they're one of the, the cancers in this entire thing. They just keep injecting massive amounts of woo into it and causing shit like this. You can actually radiocarbon date beach rock because it uh, when it's forming, like, absorbs organic matter from the sea, like mollusks and stuff. Uh, and it was radiocarbon dated to 3,500 years old. Uh, other people used uranium thorium dating to uh, date it, and it came to 15,000 years old. There's been some criticism about what's the right dating technique to use for this rock. I don't know. 
they don't know for sure how old this stuff is because we're kind of stuck in that spot where there is a big disagreement uh, between thorium and radiocarbon dating and which one's the most accurate way to date certain kinds of rock that they can date with it and it's just it's a big old goofy mess and it's outside of of my wheelhouse quite a ways too um I, i'm still of the opinion that it's beach rock i mean you look around and it's not just that it's beach rock but that it's in situ beach rock it ain't really been moved from where it is it, it's there's nothing else to really push that direction but it is worth pointing out that he's really honest here he doesn't use the date like a like of a cudgel to just say no this can't possibly be he's accepting that it's okay possibly it could be that old but who knows but one i found really weak about this episode was graham using 16th century maps to try and prove the existence of atlantis and uh, one of the maps he pulls out is the piri reese map based partly on ancient maps and based partly on the maps that christopher columbus created very old map no i do not think that this is a map of atlantis but it is the Piri Rees map, and like I mentioned in the last video, there's some cool stuff about it. But um, in this community, the old uh, Reagan adage of trust but verify seems like a pretty good thing to break out. So I sat down and taught my ancient butt how to use Google Maps Pro and how to overlay maps to it and stuff. And I want to encourage you guys to do the same after you see what I show you here. It only took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to do it. You'd probably do it in five minutes if you're a lot younger than me. It's not that difficult, and you can see what I'm talking about for yourself. All right, so bear with me because I am a little new at this, like I said, but I should have things set up to... All right, we'll start with this one. This map here looks pretty close. I have to lower the opacity there. All right, and this map is a 17th century map. Oh, where's my dang notes? 17th century map of Americas by Jan Mathis. And if we play with the Google Earth for a second, you can see that it just does not want to match up at all. You can stretch it and mess with it all you want, but it's just like, it's not the same projection. It's just not. So we go to something else, and it's not nearly as accurate either. Let's try another one. Okay, this map was smuggled from Portugal to or yeah, to Portugal from Italy in 1502. So this is pretty contemporary with the old uh, Piri Rees map. Um, here's Africa. So let's enlarge this some. I'm going to stretch it out of alignment there to make it fit. Or... But you can only stretch it on those two coordinates. I can't warp it in goofy ways. You can only stretch it longer or upper. And you can see that it's the same kind of thing. It's just like it does not want to fit no matter what you do. It's just not going to line up. Next map. Well, this one's probably not going to be even accurate at all. But we'll give it a quick whirl just because it's there and it's contemporary to all this shit. This one here is the 1520 Pietro Capo map. Um, yeah, you can just see it. It ain't going to be fun close. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Finally, let's do the Pee Rees map. Again, I encourage you guys to do this stuff on your own. You can see here I don't even cut the banner off. This is completely undoctored straight from the internets. Um... I dropped it, lower the opacity, and you'll see it lines up really quickly. Now, this software, Google Earth, drops it into Mercator projection automatically. So, look at how much this lines up here. Look at the distance there. Um, it's like perfect. Almost perfect. And... Uh, I think if you look at the rest of the map, it's not nearly as perfect, which again, it's made from a bunch of source maps. But that part right there, the coast of Brazil and this part of Africa are super duper accurate. And yes, it's got portal ones, so it looks like a portal in chart, but it's just been laid out in a Mercator projection and it fucking fits. So, I mean, again, I encourage you to do this on your own. But in this one, for this theory of his to be correct, 
a map, a physical map, would have had to have been passed down from the Younger Dryas all the way to the 16th century. Because we have ancient maps from Roman times and earlier in the medieval period that don't show America at all because they didn't know it was there, don't show Antarctica at all because they didn't know it was there. For this claim to be correct, we'd have had to have these ancient maps that were passed down until the 16th century. And yet at no point in between the 16th century and the Younger Dryas did anyone make a copy of them, a surviving copy of them, but they survived until the 16th century just as Europeans are starting to explore the world. Whether or not we can find precedents for them or not isn't really that big of a question when we're holding the thing. Look at the Antikythera mechanism. We, we can pick that one up. You know there was precedence for it. You know that there had to have been like a steady buildup to that. And that's made out of metal. And we got one. So that's kind of a crap argument, to be honest with you. And, and yes, if these things existed for the longest time, like the, the general consensus amongst people like myself that accept that some of these maps may have been around for a long time, is that they were probably gathered at the Library of Alexandria because they were like batshit crazy about gathering everything that showed up there, making a copy of it, returning a copy to the boat that it came that they stole it from, and keeping the original. So they had presumably shitloads of maps. So, and, and they would be considered high knowledge, like important knowledge. So if everything, when everything fell apart, there's a good chance that those would have been saved. That's kind of the thinking amongst us tinfoil nutters. So if that's the case, um, it would only stand to reason that that knowledge would become extremely popular again when people started like settling the world and finding out that some of these maps actually did have some accurate things on it. And that could actually explain why some of these things showed up. No, that doesn't mean I think it's Antarctic with an ice-free coast. I feel like there's a huge piece of information that Graham left out of it. Uh, is that next to the island that Graham thinks is the Bahamas, because of that orientation and all of this, that, you know, it's this grand Bahama island that's 10,000 years old, uh, Piri Rees wrote on the map Hispaniola, the island that today contains the Dominican Republic and, and Haiti. And then, you know, also he says that the Piri Rees map illustrates the coast of Antarctica when there was no ice there or something like that. Rather than just Piri Rees, you know, running out of room and so he's just moving the coastline of South America down across the paper. You know, you could believe that Graham Hancock that this is evidence of a lost map. But what Piri Rees next, wrote next to this thing that he's calling Antarctica is like, this is where all the snakes live. And it's known to be very hot. That's why the Portuguese haven't explored there. Now, Stefan was kind enough to put a little banner on the screen to let you know where he got the information from for these translations. And one of them's a website, so I went there and checked it out because one of the things that I had heard before, I wanted to see if it was true or not, and it was. Um, some of the maps are attributed from being from Alexander the Great. They call him Alexander the Two Horns in the Islamic world back in those days, but it's Alexander the Great. And... Um, <laughs> the argument against this from the skeptical side of things is, well, maybe, maybe Piri Rees didn't know who Alexander the Great was and got confused about that. And that's absolutely absurd to me because, I mean, the man was one of the most educated people of his day, probably in the top 10% or so. Um, we mostly know of Alexander the Great through written record. So to think that an extremely well-educated person wouldn't know the difference between Alexander the Great and some other Alexander is absurd. Uh, he's part of the chain of knowledge that lets us know about Alexander the Great today. But anyway, like I was saying earlier about the Library of Alexandria, maps from the time of Alexander the Great would dovetail quite nicely with everything that's on our kooky side of these ancient maps. Uh, but he doesn't translate any of the other words, which is terra australis, recenta, inventa, sed nondum, plene cognita, which according to Google Translate means southern land found recently but not fully known again i feel like that's just a crucial piece of context that graham deliberately misses out <sighs> come on man if these maps were known about for a while but they were considered to not show accurate stuff and then all of a sudden people discovered that there is actually a chunk of land down there and then they've got this map that's been around for a kajillion years wouldn't they still call it a land that was just recently discovered but not fully known? I mean, that's, that's, this is where it just feels like you don't even, like you're not thinking this through. 
Like you just hear like, bam, bam, bam. Because if you think about that for one second and give just like a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, it's pretty easy to see that that's like, if the land was lost and rediscovered, people would still call it newly discovered land when they rediscovered it, right? <sighs> this is clearly a guy who's creating a map from bits and pieces that he's getting from other incomplete world maps. He's trying to assemble a, a whole thing. And as well, if these maps were from the Ice Age, um, why is Europe shown with a modern coastline? Uh, where's Atlantis? You know, clearly these maps are created by people that had a good understanding of Europe and the Mediterranean. And as it gets further and further away, the map gets less and less accurate. That's exactly what we would expect from these early days of exploration. Now, I splice those two clips together because it shows him just like double thinking this. If there are a bunch of source maps and they're not all the same map, of course they're not going to have everything equally as accurate. And of course the things that are more recently mapped will probably be more detailed and more accurate. I don't even know how you could think that it would be otherwise in any of these scenarios in this time and it's like, again you just ha ha bang bang you got him good job milo of mini 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 minute man fame uh did a good video on this go check it out shout out to him oh sure you don't even respond to my tweets but you'll give milo a shout out and he gives you a shout out and then he goes to turkey after giving me a shout out so i'm stuck here by myself thanks to fawn all right on a serious note, thank you very much for showing up and checking out the video, staying this long. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, check out my Discord. I'm going to start posting a little teasers of the future that are only going to be available there. So um, you want to know what's going to come down the pipes, go check out my Discord. And uh, check out the other social media links too. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. All right, so bear with me because I am a little new at this, like I said, but I should have things set up. Future's now, old man.